Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of MotoGP 21 career mode. Now in today's episode 72 we will be off to Jerez in a second but first up we just put on our third upgrade onto the Moto2 bike. It will be six weeks until we get our first module complete on the frame. We have an AW anti-wheelie and an engine one in current workings but we do have a new technical member of the team available a replacer chief engineer we have this guy angel juarez um spanish but look at the engine he is an engine specialist he's quite good electronics he's not a frame guy he's not a aero guy we're gonna sign him because we are ducati we want power more than anything so now if you look at our overall synergy we have power and we have electronics which are ducati's two strongest up there with aero they're better than everyone else on aero but frame is not the strong point so we're not going to touch the frame i've said this before but this is just confirmed by getting in the right men to build a team do i want to build a team and continue ducati's legacy of building rocket ships now let's jump in to Harith. as you join me here in q2 it is currently a ducati one two three believe it or not and i've yet to set a time so we've come through q1 already and i was in the 36s so i do believe i can beat i think it's jack currently ahead of peco ahead of jorge martin let's see if we make it a ducati one to four at a non ducati track this has never been a ducati track they've only won here once i believe and that was last season with Jack Miller. And that was after Fabio had arm pump. He was not going to win it at outright pace. It was Fabio's race that let it down really and gave Jack the win. Now he still rode amazingly to make his tyres last and stuff. But ultimately did not have the outright pace of Fabio. And we are using the same tyres as we went through in Q one with just to have a feel of what tire wear is like with the bike at this track and the day with a medium rear soft front and they are quite high deg from what i've seen so far i've gotten my Jorge martin asper all wrong but we're still red from my knowledge into this stadium section spanish fans will be screaming come race day we're still four tenths under we're well on truly on for pole if we can get the final sector down which is again probably the worst sector for ducati on the track oh a bit too fast into ferrari ran wide on the exit into lorenzo we come and what are we going to do we got it pretty well nice laid apex good traction up through the gears we go it's going to be a woman of 36 2. it is currently one to four Ducatis. And yeah, it's ended up with a Ducati one to four. So the front three are factory Ducatis. Then we've Jorge Martin on a Pramac and then Zarco. So five Ducatis in the top eight. That is um that is scary for the rest. And I am point eight quicker than anyone else on worn tires. So so yeah, this is going to be a good one. So even though I'm on pole, this is a bit of a risk going with a hard rear. Miller with a soft front is also a risk because I did two laps of the soft front and it was not in a great place. And my confirms me and Rossi are the only people. So first and last on the grid are the only men on a hard rear, which does not bode well. It was recommended for medium, but the medium deg was quite high. Look at that. Look at us. The three red Ducatis in for Mason. I love it. Oh, that is brilliant. That is so good to see. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be a fun and interesting race. Can we become the first rider in history to win on three different manufacturers in MotoGP? It's going to be, uh, it's going to be hard, but we'll give it a go. Five red lights, and we are away. A decent start. Not really, actually. Jack has beat me into one. Him on the saw front. Pecco as well. Jorge Martin as well. We've been eating up in the pack. We're back into P7. Not the start we bloody wanted. Anyway, we're going to get in here. We have the hard... Oh, we've been punted by Paul on the Honda. Hard rear is bloody cold. It's scorching in Jerez. This is one of the hottest races of the year. It's one of the most 
slippery tracks because it gets so hot it just gets greasy but around here at the moment it looks like it's pretty cool and the medium runners are having a great day in the opening sector will i rue the decision to go with a hard rear only time will tell our pace is quite good so i hope i can make the difference as a rider Mia lost the front there and pushed out wide into our line we had to sit it up or else we both would have been down so nine laps a long enough race already the two ducatis up front have wanted to make a break Cotarado is trying his best to stick with them and doing quite well he's actually closing in in these corners here the high corner speed yamaha corners you could say Suzuki of Mare is struggling. He's put Jorge Martin back into us. We're going to go for the move. Just slide up the inside. Pick him up off the race of nine. Mare's bounced off the curb. We're going to go to power three. See if we can get the power down to pass him. We're going to have to leave the brakes off into one. They go very defensive, but we have to go even more offensive to get the move done. And again, we just ease him off the racing line, and that is back to P5. So now it's Ducati 1, 2 and 5 at the moment. Usually in these conditions, if you have a hard rear, you want to spin it. You can take the abuse, so I'm going to just have to be really aggressive on the throttle around this place. But we're keeping tabs on the guys in front. This will be the last race as well. We'll have a stock Ducati. We will get our first aero upgrade on the bike before the next round which will be Le Mans. We're not really making the inroads on a leash as I would have liked so we're kind of hitting a wall with our pace at the moment. We're trying our best but they're just their pace is always way up in the race and that is Miller very wide. His soft front tire is already looking worse for wear as he was completely off the racing line there through the exit of Jorge Martin Aspar. It's just crucial now. We start to plug away at this and pull it back. We've pulled a bit of a gap on the Suzuki man of Mir, so that is good to see. Good exit. We're right on the back for now. Fast as after me, 36 4. And I'm not really getting anywhere with it. We get close to him into the final corner, maybe. Oh, big mistake there for him and Fabio. But again, we just get onto the back of him and run out of room. Oh, big mistake. Out onto the curbs. We want to run it wide, but I want to cut back for a late apex. Jesus, mere as optimistic. I nearly locked the front end because of the way it broke when I saw him. But we managed to just slide around the outside we're going to tip in across him and hope he isn't there but he's trying to push us wide we just would hold on i really am looking forward to some upgrades this bike because the aero and the weedy are just a bit too much at the moment especially when i get a good exit i seem to lose it with a, a lot of wheelies so we're on lap four here already which race is flying boy and we're not making the inroads we're just about getting on the back of them we're losing edge grip already, that's not good. But as I was saying, we were just on the back of him again. Look at the time we make up down into Pedroza, the old dry sack corner. But we can't get a move done on the Aprilia yet. Oh, we have a look into turn 8. Nothing doing, he's running away though. We're going to try it here. And we're going to just go across him and go a bit defensive. He has a look, but we are close enough. And Peko's into the lead. That isn't good for me. Miller was doing a good job of holding him up. I think Peko, out of all of them, it has the best pace. Again, they all have that weird kind of glitch in mid-corner. Where they just turn in a bit too early every lap and they run it deep. Oh, we're in deep again. Got to stop. Oh, big mistake from Fabio. That's going to compromise his run. Can we? Go? We're going to go to the outside. Another fastest lap, 
I'm going to leave the brake off round the outside. He's touching the back wheel of us. But we managed to get it done. Now it's just Miller. We are starting to make headway now. But I believe if we leave Pecco out front any longer, we could be in serious trouble. So it's the three amigos once again. Miller, Pecco and myself. Miller runs it a bit hot. Can we try it on Miller down into Pedroza? He's quite good in the brakes, but so are we. Should be P2, it looks like it is. That saw front is letting him down, I reckon. It would be like chewing gum. Peko has the weirdest position in the world to look behind. He goes up wide. The actually, it's just a Ducati line by the look of it, because the two of them are doing it, not just Jack. And Peko does have a medium front on. GZ went really defensive there just to block me off. Took a lot of inside curb. But we are coming into run. It looks like the hard tyre was the choice. All over the back of him. Again, we catch him in the awkward places like there. That's twice now. We have just get a better run through turn three. And that puts us on the back foot for the rest of the lap up until we catch him again. We run it deep there. How far back is Miller? Miller is struggling. He is... Wilting behind us a touch. Once again, Peck goes a long look. Over his left shoulder at myself. Again, he's just parking at mid-ex a bit like Qatar. He knows I take a lot of corner speed, so he's just sitting and blocking me everywhere we go. Riding a very defensive race, a bit like a Davi would. But again, he's wide there. Now, what can we do? He just gets good enough exit, I can't really do anything. We're going to take a wide entry. But again, just run into a blockade of Ducati. True here is my best bet, but again, we just... Small mistake there on entry for me. He, even bigger mistake from Pecco, he was on the grass. That could have been end of race. That could have been another DNF for Pecco. He's already at two this year. Ooh, into the final corner. Come again, look at that. This is our opportunity now. Up to power three. There's a crash behind. It's not Miller, thankfully. Into the lead we go. Can he outbreak us is the question. He's run us wide. He's punted us wide. I cannot believe it. And now only a lap and a half remaining. And we have to catch him again. We just let the brakes off and ran us off the track. Could that be our victory gone? We have clear track now, so if we have pace, we should be able to use it. Good thing is we have a good drop of fuel left in the bike. We have to be demoned on the brakes into Pedroza to make up the time. And look at that, we just drifted in, back in, and we're back with him almost. So it looks like it's going to come down to the last lap here. And again he has a look over. He should be doing that there. He's actually thrown me off and I've turned in too early. So... Some weird tactics. What in the name of God? How do we stay on? That should have been a crash. I've been rattled. I am rattled. Only a lap left. And the gap is up at the second. I think that's it. I think that is it. I think the race win at Hareth. The one I wanted is gone. I'm going to take something special to win this now. It really is. Oh, we're deep into two, into Michelin. Oh, just... That should have been a crash. I'm lucky to still be in this race. Taking so much out of him, taking so much. Look at that, we took four tenths out of him there. It's half a second. 
Is there a place we can do it? I'm not quite sure. We are on an absolute charge. We're half a second under our fastest lap of the race. Where can we do it on Peko? Can we even do it? I'm not quite sure yet. We need a mistake probably into the sector here. And he's right deep the inside. That looks like we've done it. He has the inside off for the final corner. Is he going to try it? We're going to park it on the apex. I cannot believe it, but it looks like it's going to be our first win for Ducati. Up to the line we come. What a final lap. Fastest lap on the final lap. Fastest lap of the weekend. And we get our first win for Ducati, and that was something a little bit special. Pretty much the last corner. I was surprised that he pushed me wide in turn one the previous lap, and I was actually more surprised he didn't do it in the final corner. Because they take a very, very, very aggressive line on entry, and I thought he would run me wide. I actually braked very early, hoping that he'd go in hot, I'd square him off and beat him on the drag to the line, but he actually managed to... I think maybe he thought I might do the opposite and he kind of went shallow and we both ended up just kind of following each other and we get our victory and that puts us into the lead of the championship by nine points over Jack Miller who comes home in P3 so it was a Ducati a factory Ducati podium first in history and we had a first rider in history to win with three different manufacturers in the modern era we won with the Aprilia we've won with Suzuki and now we've won on the V4 of the Ducati so pretty special record there and now we lead and it's top three in the championship is also the factory ducati so life is rosy in bologna and we make a huge gap over suzuki in that race 83 points only after four rounds and 28 points over yamaha so we've already raced a mount in the constructors and look at that look what it means to me i am delighted with that one that was a fantastic race I was worried early on the race when the medium boys seemed to have serious pace out the box. But we really gave it everything to win there. And uh, Gigi giving us the hug and the praises we deserve. He's delighted. Chiabati to his left. And uh, oh, what a special race that was. Delighted to get my first win. See, can we crack on now? Because it's we had the pace in Qatar 1. We had the pace in Qatar 2. Made a mistake. Lost the chance of changing a... Uh, a w into turn eight i think it was just a ran it wide and tried to take a weird line it didn't work last time out we couldn't qualify and we couldn't catch frankie and we took p2 we've could in theory we could have won all races this season far but we finally get it done in a ref and uh what a place to do it my favorite track and that's why races like that that was intense but we do it look at that the three ducatis on the podium i love it I'll be interested to see now um, where uh, Jorge Martin and Zarco came because they were also in the top 10. But jeez, that was it, such a stunning race. I'm delighted to get such a good result. But anyway, let's see how my boys in the Motor 2 and Motor 3. I'm going to say Rizal 1 or is definitely on the podium, hopefully in Motor 3. Maybe points in Motor 2. Whoa, look at Dom. He came 5th in the race. Get in there, boy. And unfortunately, Camora, Carmona, sorry, qualified 19, finished 19. So he qualified in 14 and finished 5th. What a result for him. I'm delighted. That's my first top 5 in Moto 2. So I'm delighted for Dom. Fair play to him. He is coming on strong now. And uh, he's leading the team. And it's actually a podium for Hernandez and P4. So we qualified 5th and 4th, respectively, for Hernandez and Rosal. And Rosal came home in a nice 4th for his championship. And that is a brilliant result for Hernandez. So, a great result overall for that weekend for me personally. And we have got next to two men and women, men and women over from Bologna to the team into our corner to spend on a bit of upgrading the bike. So, I think that means we do have the first development. So, we're going to save all the development for the next episode, which will be Le Mans. And then we have a week off, and then we go to Magello, the home race. So it is hot and heavy in the season. We have the lead in the championship. Let's just have a quick look at Motor 2. That means, where is our boy? Our boy is 14 to 12 points, so he's doing quite well. And uh, Carmona is still down in 22nd, unfortunately. But we have faith he will grow. And look at the championship. Look at that. 
Look at that. He's 20 points over Messia. Hernandez is only in fourth as well. That is brilliant for my championship. So Jack Rizal, the Malaysian rider on the Honda, is doing bits in the Moto3 category. He is a strong favourite this year to go on and win the title. So let's see what we can do with these boys. Well, Hernandez as well showing very strong. We're probably leading to the team's championship as well, I reckon. Yeah, we're leading by 17 points over Red Bull KTM. Let's have a quick look at the teams in Moto2. We are... Nor to be seen. We're 10th, which isn't too bad out of 16 teams. So, if we could finish in the top 10, I'd be quite happy with that. But I am going to leave it there for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, drop a like down below and subscribe to see more of this crazy, crazy season. It's going to run along into the season, this battle between the Ducatis. But I'm up for it and I'm really enjoying it so far. So, thanks once again for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.